Um, you know, you got the belt. Um, was it your first, like, say, main professional belt? Yeah. Right? How did that make you feel? Like, just holding. Listen, I won the belt. Um, it's changed. It's changed my life somewhat. Get a lot of respect, admiration from people. Most importantly, I, I've inspired uh, a generation. A lot. I go to. I don't know if you know, but I go to a lot of schools. That's the reason why yeah, I got the belt today. Yeah, I seen go it to a lot of media. schools. And I tell my story, the story about my life, what I've come through, and how I came, um, overcame adversity to get to where I am and obviously win the belt. And it's an amazing story which people need to hear. And my aim and my passion is to affect the, these communities, people that have come from similar backgrounds to me, so they can aspire to do something great. And everybody has it in them. You know, it's just the way I see it is like I was a champion before I had the title. People think I don't understand. Like, it's just the mindset, it's just practicing, committing yourself to mastery of your sport and go and believe in yourself uh, fundamentally, believing in your ability that you can achieve. And sometimes it might not be there, but it's the belief that keeps you going, keeps you consistent, keeps you going back, keeps you going back to the gym to, to learn that. And listen, when I, when I see a kid come up to me and say, Richard, like, you changed my life, you, it will send me a message, I'll tons of them on Instagram, like you changed my life, you, you're my inspiration. People from all different cultures and colours and creeds say, wow, you know, I made that effect on that. Listen, I'm going to become a world champion. So you can say, you know what, like, because of Richard, I'm going to strive to be the best. It doesn't matter if it's boxing, if it's uh, playing tennis, playing football, it doesn't matter. As long as it's working and keeping these kids out of, uh, out of obviously getting involved in crime and stuff like that. Because listen, crime rate right now is sky high. Things need to change, something needs to change, and I'll put myself and my life out there you know, so people can use me as a reference. You know, and to be honest, a lot of people want to do it, a lot of people don't do it. And I'll tell you this, a lot of boxers have been through the same stuff that I've been through. I'm not saying the cows or anything like that for not coming out, but they should like tell their story because it would help so many people. But you know, each of their own, and, and you know what I'm saying, I'll just do what I, I'm going to do. So that was, that was actually going to be my next question. Obviously, we'll come to. We'll talk about your, like, your early life and, uh, and what have you in a bit, but do you think enough boxers are, are doing what you're doing and do you think there should be more role models out there? Uh, listen, of course. The way I see it is like this, coming from where I come from, the most effective way of changing generations is being an example and you come from that type of background yourself. I've seen a lot of people come up with these have these projects and stuff. And I just wonder, I'm thinking, when I was like out there on the roads, on the fields, do you think if any of these guys came to my community to do any of these things or came to my school, that it would actually change me? I would love, and I'll, I will have my knife in my pocket, in, in the school uh, playground or whatever, listening to this, and I'd be like, you know, it's true, but you know, it's not changing anything. But when I see somebody that actually come from my background and has achieved this, Wow, like you, that means I can do it. It's like, I remember it happened to me one time when um, I saw, um, obviously, someone like Giggs, for example. Giggs grew up in my area, the rapper. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know where he actually went through, but I was there, like, we, you know, we were pretty close. And, and to see what he's achieved now, just even till today, it gives me so much inspiration. You came from where I came from. If you can do it, I can do it too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's that, that's what changes me, and it makes me want to do better. So I can change more people and help more people. That's it. That's what it is. That's what I love. When I um, grew up, it was it was either a footballer who would be a DJ or an MC. So they saw a lot of um, back in my day, Wiley, so solid and, and what have you. Grow up on on the streets, but they kind of did well and made it. And you know, a lot of kids were aspiring to be what they are. But because of the rise of boxing at the moment, the last four or five years, um, it's nice to see like yourself going out to other schools going out to you know, community centres um, and you don't see as many boxers doing that. I mean, do you think it, it sh you know, more should, should more be done? Should, more should, because I have my own individual story and um, other boxers will be re relatable to others. I can only affect a certain amount and then a certain amount, a certain amount of, of the new generation will listen to Someone like Tony Belly, for instance, he's been through this, he's been through that, and look what he's achieved. You know, I, 
come from the same area as you, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, listen, I'm listening to you, Tony, like you're my idol. Uh, I'm aspiring to be like you. Thank you, you changed my life. So, yeah, I think it should be done. I think a lot of boxers should go out there and, and do it. And even if they don't want to give some information, they don't have to. But it's just all about just going there because you go in there and taking a step walking through an institution and telling the story and telling kids, like, listen, listen, I was like you, what I've achieved is nothing. Like, you could do more. Start now. I started boxing at 18. I had my first fight when I was 19. And I've achieved, you know, quite a lot, I would say, in a short career. So it's just, uh, it's all about just going, going out there and going for it. I received messages from um, Chevron Clark. I don't know if you know him. Chevron Clark? Yeah. Jimmy Squad. He said, Richard, anytime you want to, like, you're doing one of these talks and you want me down there, please call me. You see, people like that, they're the people that are going to achieve a lot because I just feel it's a just, I feel like it's a just thing. Like, it's just when I got my championship fight, it's like, I thought, it just makes sense because it's what I stand for, it's what I represent. I believe that the universe just comes in line to things that are just and things that are right, things what the world needs, and people help you. And I don't know, energy, I don't know if things just come in line and it's scared. I don't, I don't think it's a flu or anything like that. I think it's meant to be. And Sam was meant to lose on that day. It's just that, that simple. It's just that's why I was just uh, I was happy, of course, but I just knew I was going to become champion. And this is not the end. I believe I'm going to achieve so much more. You're only 21 years old. Exactly. So much more. Um, we'll go back to that in a bit. But just in regarding when you're going around your schools and that, did a lot of the, the kids know, see, see your fight and know who you were? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it's, it's funny. It's, um, I was at, today I was at Holloway, Holloway School in Islington. And one of the kids came to me after the talk and said, Oh, Richard Rappel, I, I saw your fight. He was against Sam Hyde. It was a really good fight. You know, like, and I was shocked. Like, How old were the kids? He was like about 15. 15, 14 years old. Like, I wasn't even interested in boxing at that time. I was watching wrestling, yeah, yeah. Uh, football. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's good, man. It's humbling. It's really, really humbling. And I just love it, man. It's just, trust me, it's like my next passion is boxing. I love boxing. Like, the way I love boxing, I don't know, man. I, I can't describe my prayer to everything. Like, from boxing, like, after boxing. It's, it's just, I pray to boxing first. With all these kids, they've got like camera phones and stuff now. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm assuming they're you know, getting their pictures with yeah, you. Yeah, they're always asking for pictures, yeah, all grass. Yeah. In my head, I'm just thinking, listen, I'm a normal guy. I'm just like you guys, like, trust me. Like, I remember when I was here in your position, this is someone else coming in. Like, trust me, you can do way more than this. Like, seriously. Just, that's what we always tell them. Listen, it's all about definiteness and purpose. It's not what you want to do. When I was your age, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I got to like 18, 19, not even that. When I got to like about, to be honest, when I got to 26, when I got to 26, that's when I decided I want to go pro and I want to be a professional boxer. I want to like win titles and stuff. Can you imagine that? Like 26 and I'm now 29. So look at a short period of time just knowing what I want to do. Imagine if you, if you knew what you wanted to do at age 15. What could you have achieved? What can you achieve in that, like in a short space of time and still be under 20? Like, that's just what I say. So I just always tell the kids that like, bang on and bang on and bang on. Definitely miss the purpose. Know what you want to do. And just start planning, planning ahead, attacking and pushing forward and dedicating yourself to it. Master it. Even if you change a couple of kids' lives. Just, uh, just one. I, I did an interview on BBC. And I went, it went viral. It was like the second most watched video on the whole BBC website, you know. And, you know, it's impressive, you know, as there's um, political news and things like that all around the world. So, you know, I was shocked. I was like, wow, like, that's, that's good. And I, I said it there, I said, listen, if I could change one person or help one person, that's good. No, I've done my job. I'm, I'm good. That's it. Um, so going to you, you're managed by Dillian White, and he's come from a background which is, um, I'd say, he's got some hardships in life with you. Tell me how you guys came to collaborate or, you know, him to start managing. How did that come? You know, um, it was like, Dillian, I've known Dillian for quite a long time. I remember doing some filming with Dillian. I used to have this platform called BFTV. Uh, Bright, brighter Future TV, and then I filmed them training. You can go on like YouTube and watch it. He was young then. Dylan was probably like 
22, 23. Is this in his kickboxing days? No, just after, right yeah. after when he was pro. And then I did the video, and then we've just been cool ever since. Like, you know, J Dylan is one of them down to earth guys. No matter what he achieves in boxing, yeah. how famous he will ever be in the future, he will always be the same guy. Generally, just, down, just yeah, seems just very humble. Just when everyone that's in the industry said that, uh, you know, even Richard, Richard um, got off that, um, so. so it's so like, down to earth. And it gives you a lot of time a day. I describe one of the realest people that I know, one of the realest guys that I know. And with all he's achieved, you would expect him to be a certain way. Stuck up, he walks for pictures, just walk off and not. Like every, any fan that asks him and stops him for a picture, he could have been in a, in a rush, mm. going to a press conference and late, and stop by and still be the picture. That's the type of guy he is. Mm. So I, I love it. And um, anyway, after that, we started talking in the gym, we did some sparring, and he was just, he was just um, interested after that. He was like, listen, there's an opportunity for you to you know, sign with me. This this what we can bring you, this is what we can bring you. You know, we come from similar backgrounds. You know, and the proposal was just it's good, it just made sense. And it's just one of the ones, it's a risk as well at the same time, but you know, like what's what's the what's like you, you just have to kind of um, sit down and analyze the risk that you're taking and I, I thought it was just a no-brainer. And Dillian, he actually cares, you know, that's the thing about this industry. You get with a lot of managers and promoters that they don't care about you. They, don't, they couldn't give a toss. You're just a, literally like a product, that's all. You don't, they don't care if anything happens to you. Like they'll, they'll feel it maybe for a day or two and then it's back to business. But that's someone that actually cares about you, wants you to do well. When I was at, um, when he was ringside for that Sam High fight, he had training and I was all, came there, he was shouting, screaming, push it back, do this, do that. You know, I can feel the love. And sometimes it's love what you need to, to grow and do better. You know what I mean? Not just a manager, it's like exactly. a friend and advisor. Yeah. I, I describe him as a brother. Yeah. He's like my brother. And you obviously train alongside him with Mark, Mark yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Um, how, did, how did you and Mark kind of, was that through Jillian that you started to train? No, that was, that was a through Jillian. I, I approached Mark myself and I, I was talking to Mark. He saw me, because just remember when I was coming to Spa, he was seeing how I performed and you know, he thought, you know, we could do something with Richard. Yeah. Like Richard's got talent, he's got a lot of potential. Let's work together. And that's when I spoke to Mark and then we just touched base. One day I came to the gym and we did some work together and I just fell in love with his style, movement, you know, he's intelligent as well. But his dad as well, like, he did it around. Pardon? You still got Jimmy Tips as well. Yeah, exactly. Such an honor. Exactly. It's just more about just bonding and understanding his philosophy. He's really strategic. I feel like we just we just literally linked up before the fight, not to, maybe for or three weeks we changed together. And I, between me and you, I didn't even hit the bags. He didn't ever stand over me and say, yeah, Richard, do this on your bags, do that. No, I didn't do no bag work for that fight. You know, I just trained, I did some SSC work, <laughs> shadow boxing and sparring, that's it. But then I, I know it's that, you know, you have to condition certain parts of the body and, and that's what these things are for. And, but it's experience, isn't it? Yeah. So when, you, when I go into the next fight, uh, you should see the difference. Um, have you, Dillian and Mark, spoke what's next for you? Um, yeah, what yeah, you of course. Like? Uh, well, it's uh, there's a lot of competition, as you know. Yeah, the cruiserweight you know, is a UK. Yeah, it's quite competitive. Everybody's a prospect, and nobody's taking risks. Like I feel like me and Sam Hyde is going to change as, as chain boxing. We're in our uh, um, category. No, actually, you know what? To tell a lie, credit is due to Lawrence Napoli because he, he's been stepping up, you know, and fighting these guys, these prospects. But um, with us, it's like, it's just, it was a straight 50 you know? I don't see nobody fighting people that have double your record and are undefeated. You don't see it. But he had, like Sam Hyde had double my record, he had seven fights. You see it, it was ridiculous. I'm talking about, I had about, let's say, 14 rounds of professional experience in the ring 
14 rounds. At that time, going into that fight, he had 50 something rounds, 56, 57 rounds of professional experience. So you see, I was already on the back foot, already way on the back foot. And the same things that when you're in the ring, you, you wouldn't understand. Everything's, yeah, I could do, I could, I could definitely see a fight and say, listen, I can beat him. It's completely different when you get in the ring. You see fighters that look slow, and you think, nah, look how slow you I'll see that from a mile away. No, it's different. It's a whole mixture of uh, hard will, determination, perseverance. Sometimes you get people with a shot that's painful, you're thinking, oh, I can sit up. Let me just take my money and go home and um, disappear off into the night. But it's, it's, it's more to it, you know what I'm And when a fighter's got momentum as well in his camp, you know, that also is an advantage, you know, momentum, energy. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that you fight against. And that's why some people say, oh, I fight Richard. And then be like, uh, maybe in the future we'll take that fight later on, you know what I mean? Because they know that this is what money, we're on it. Like, trust me, we're on it. When you, when you were preparing for Sam, did you, um, was there anything in particular that you thought he, he was good at or, or most dangerous that you wanted to kind of Oh, as in what he was, yeah, what, I mean, like experiencing him? So, uh, let, let me finish that. So, um, is there anything in particular that Sam, that Sam brought to the table that like, Mark was like, you need to be aware of this or when he does this or, you know? There was more like, um, I watched some of these fights. I knew um, Sam was going to be a, a tough fighter and a tough opponent. The reason why is one of his fights, he, he dislocated his, his uh, knee bone, his kneecap, and he, he was dropping and getting back up and still fighting, and he managed to get a draw. That shows a lot of heart, will, and a fighting spirit. That's why I always respect Sam. And, and to be fair to him, the injury that he had, he, you know, he, he just. He didn't really probably want to quit. He was there, wasn't he? He was I mean, still there. Yeah. He was there. Even with his injury, he was still there. He still wanted to, to fight and try his best to get the win. But with, with that, it's like a blessing and a curse because sometimes you can get yourself really badly damaged and it can affect you jumping, jumping back in the ring. I'm so happy that he's, he can, he's able to fight again. But, um, you know, it's that could have been his last fight yeah. Yeah. at such an early age. But, um, yeah, it's, um, it's a fight game, really. You know. Sam, Sam is a, he was a top opponent. He had heart, will, courage, and a lot, a lot of fighters don't have that. I had that as well. So I knew it was gonna, it was, it was a straight. It was gonna be a very interesting contest. Everybody knew on paper because I had a fight once against one journeyman, and starting off in the first round, I was throwing my shots, and a lot, of ha a lot was happening in my life there around that stage, which I think is, was the reason why. I was switched off and I'll just do something. It just came over with some big overhand right. Like I woke up like, oh, cool. where? <laughs> but anyway, I, just, I got up. I see the the, um, the referee counting. I was thinking, fifth and up. That's a real introduction to the pro game. But anyway, and then anyway, we to cut the long story short, we got, we got the win in the end, and we, we got the stoppage. That was, that was also important because yeah. you wanted to that stop the these journey man. Third round, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 it was the third round. And I got him a good shot and put him down. And I was like, yeah, that's what you get for trying to give me, give me one in the beginning. But anyway, um, yeah, but so we had, on paper, we had similar kind of stories. Like, wow, Richard Rackle got hit and dropped. God, everybody was shocked. Like, Seriously, this prospect, okay. And then Sam Hyatt's knee come off in the fight. And Joseph, Did you know that does that? The knee comes off, and then you, after that, you just want to you fight. <laughs> it's crazy. Very much. Like you have to Isaac Chamberlain when his shoulder came out. Exactly. That's what he came out. Chamberlain has the same type of. He thing. carried on and yeah. looked at them. I say these fighters are cut from a different cloth because when the going gets tough, they get, they get going. And even if they they turn handicapped at any moment, the fight they still be going. Daniel Williams, all from that same type of cloth. You know what I mean? They can they can be injured and they just still keep on going. The fight is still in them. They'll try. They'll try. They won't give up. And that's why it's going to be an interesting one. To be honest, I don't think a lot of boxers, if they dislocate, dislocate their knee in a fight, they would not, they would have given up straight away. Whether they given up, like literally, or given up in their heart or in their mind. Trust me. Same as getting put down. Getting put down and getting back up is a different story. It's not, it's not the same as just boxing and taking. No. Like it's, it's complete. You have to remember, like you'll lose your equilibrium, and you have to compose yourself, relax yourself, breathe. You know, there's a lot of things to experience, and 
I'll put all of that under my belt. Eight bites. How great. I'm happy.